Hey guys, I'm Bryson with Trick Tools and we are back here with another project video for you guys. So uh, this one's gonna be a different one than what we've been doing lately. Uh, so uh, this is a project car of mine that I've been working on for a while. And as I've been building the car, uh, you know, I built the chassis, uh, mounted up this uh, 2016 Ford Mustang rear suspension in it and uh, got it all rolling, everything was good. But as I've been building the car, I decided that um, I really needed a little bit more room uh, inside of the car uh, in the trunk area. So, um, you know, with the frame rails coming up above the, uh, I guess the, the bolt-in cradle for the Mustang suspension, uh, I kind of realized that uh, it was creating, you know, the floor height in the trunk was gonna be pretty high taking away from the room inside the car. So uh, I've decided what I'm gonna do is get rid of the Mustang cradle and just incorporate all the suspension mounts into the frame rails themselves. So uh, basically what I'm gonna be doing is cutting the rear of the frame off and taking the cradle out of here. And I've already built all this uh, jig fixture stuff to, um, to go to all the suspension mounting points and all the pickup points there, as well as holding the uh, differential in place uh, inside here. So when I cut the frame rails off, take the uh, cradle out of here, it'll just be the fixturing left. And then we'll be able to build the tubes uh, to come from here uh, and come across and pick up some of the mounting points uh, in a similar location to where the, the frame sections are on the cradle itself. So um, yeah, so we're gonna show you guys the process of bending the tubes and getting those uh, in place where we need them to be able to pick up these mounting points and then we'll uh, make all the bracketry uh, and all that to be able to have our mounts in place. So um, stick with us on this project and uh, it should be a pretty fun one. So um, we'll get to work on this thing and show you guys the steps that it takes to build a tubular section of a frame uh, with uh, mounting brackets and such incorporated into it. All right, so you see in the time lapse there that we that I took and disassembled everything, uh, disassembled the jigs that I had bolted back here, got the cradle out of here. Obviously, I'd cut the frame, uh, the old frame rails off, and uh, put those aside, and got everything cleaned up uh, where this is here. So at this point, basically the next step is you know at this point you can look at it and say well how do you know you know where your tubes are going to land if you start bending tubes well we're going to plan some of the heights according to where some of these mounts are so uh you know somewhere uh i would say like in this plane here um we'll have that's where we'll have kind of a flat section of tube that'll come across here and then the mount brackets will stick out from there on the side you know and then that tube here once it passes where this mounting bracket is here um, not a hundred percent sure yet. That's kind of the, the cool part when you're doing a custom project like this is that there's no, uh, the only limiting parameters really are however you really want to have it designed. So, um, once it comes past here, not a hundred percent sure where I'm going to go with it, but it's probably going to make a turn and come across the back of here. And then we'll be able to incorporate the mounting, uh, sections here for the, uh, differential and all that. So, and then we'll be able to come off with brackets uh, to capture this rear mount for the control arm. So that would be this top tube here coming up in some form here, coming around and going around the top there and going back around. This bottom tube will end up coming uh, probably at a slightly different angle here, um, but it'll have to come a little bit lower to capture this uh, mount here, which is actually for the toe link um, on the suspension. So we'll come across down here and end up connecting in back to the plates that we're going to have made for the uh, mount back here. So there's going to be a lot going on, a lot of different angles, a lot of different you know things to account for as far as uh, what we're going to be building back here. 
Um, but really, the whole the whole idea with this was just to get rid of the cradle, make it toward the mount, the frame rail tubes that were here are now going to be a lot lower, which is going to give me more area in the trunk of the car, like I said before, and uh, obviously just to really complete the look of the custom chassis uh, back here. So. Um, the next step will be trying to determine, you know, some of the angles. So if we have uh, a bend that's going to come off of here and have to come up this way before it bends flat here, you know, we'll have to play with some different tools to, you know, figure out maybe what this bend angle is going to have to be, uh, and then uh, vice versa over here, that sort of thing. So, uh, you know, we can start planning out some of the locations, and probably what I'll do is figure out exactly how far away I want the tube center line from where the mount center line is going to be here. And I'll actually probably build a couple of other uh, fixture points that will tell me exactly where my frame rail height needs to be. That way I can start making measurements there and uh, go from there. So we'll probably, I'm going to build the top tube first. And the reason for that is I want to know exactly where this tube is going to come up here and come back here and then that's going to tell me um, basically what some of this upper structure is going to look like to uh, mount in the like I said the differential mounts and the you know the mounting of the rear control arm bracket so I want to know that first because this bottom tube uh, is essentially going to come this way and it's going to end it's going to end somewhere in here in some of our in, in our plate. So the top tube is going to be a little more complex um, and there's probably going to be a little more involved in where that is going to be located. So, um, you know, according to the cradle here, um, essentially, you know, where this this would be our, our highest mounting point. So where I was talking about on the table here, our tube coming in this way, that's going to be kind of replacing this upper uh, part of this uh, cradle here um, so we'll get all that determined and then the bottom tube like I said when that comes off and comes forward this down here is the lower control arm mount uh, that I have made this fixture for here so that tube is going to come from underneath here and it's going to capture the toe link mount and then come forward and uh, you know mount somewhere in there so um, you know like I said before there's there's no um, absolute you know thing that you have to do there's no um, book that tells you exactly what you need all that sort of thing uh, I'll have the design freedom to do what I want to make this uh, you know fit how I need it to and to be able to work you know for the project here so um, it's pretty cool when you're working on something like this like I said to be able to just have the design freedom to do what you want so uh, we'll show you guys the steps on that and uh, we'll get this uh, tubing bent up and go from there. So at this point, I'll start laying out some of the bends, some of my heights and that sort of thing. And we'll go from there. All right, guys. So to talk about what I'm doing here, um, what I was working on there, uh, obviously trying to lay out some of the basic parameters of where I want the tube. So measuring the heights of the existing frame rail from the table, measuring how far I want the frame rail height to be through here to the table, that sort of thing. Also, um, from there, how I guess the transition from here, obviously the tube's gonna have to bend up, it's gonna come up here, and then it's gonna make another bend and go back flat here. So trying to mark out where, uh, you know, at what point the tube, I have to make sure it's flat through here uh, in order to be able to make sure that I have a nice, uh, straight, easy mounting place for the brackets here. Um, so just trying to get some of that measured out. Um, at some point the tube is gonna come across the back and you know go back around the front so I'm measuring all this to hopefully make this all out of one tube so that's going to be the goal it's going to be a pretty complicated piece so I'm going to give it a shot and see if we can make it happen out of one piece uh, there's going to be I guess all in all there'd be about six bins uh, in the whole piece so there's a chance that you know by the time you know you get one bin this bin come back here other bin by the time you get around there it's really hard to do that many bends and get it to land exactly where you need it, uh, you know, to the degree and to the specific measurement. Um, you know, we do as much homework as we can, uh, as much calibration on the bender as we can, all that sort of stuff to be able to know 
our bins and know the vendor and know how the machine's gonna operate in that uh, aspect. But so getting all those measurements laid out. But what I have to do now actually is put the body back on the chassis so you can kind of see the, the body mounts uh, that are in place here. Uh, right here, there's eight of these body mounts already in place. Uh, and so the body, that section of the floor is pretty much done. So the body will sit on there. I can bolt it back in place, get it locked in. And then I'll know where the tail panel is on the back of the car. And then from there, obviously that'll tell me how far back I can bring the tube for the rear uh, before it crosses over to pick up the rear, uh, the rear body cross member that I've already made. Um, and there's already uh, body mount locations in there. So we'll make sure that this tube, when it comes back here, it's gonna come back flat and then it'll bend around here at some point, uh, you know, to pick up those rear body mount locations. So uh, at that point, what we're gonna do is there's gonna end up being another cross tube of some type, either a tube or I might do, um, I don't know, we might do some plate or something uh, to be able to pick up the mounting locations for the differential. So um, <clears throat> basically the whole point of getting the body back on here is just to double check clearances to the back, you know, whatever the distance is back here. And then from there we can figure out how and what we wanna do as far as crossing over this way. So uh, we're gonna get the body back on and keep going from there. All right guys, so we got the body back on here. Um, and what I've done here is laid out for you guys uh, a tape line on the side of the body to kind of show representation of kind of what was in the car versus what we're going for as far as frame roll height. So you guys have a better understanding of um, why I decided to do this. So uh, this top tape line here would represent kind of about where the chassis used to be as far as the, the overall height. So as you can see, uh, you know, it's limited on space in this distance here, plus it takes up a little bit of room here. Um, so, decided obviously redoing everything by getting rid of the uh, bolting cradle. I can lower the frame rail height, get everything tucked in there a little bit better. So, this new line down here is a representation of pretty close to what I'm going to be going for on the new height. So, obviously about four inches lower or so at least. Um, obviously this is just, I just laid this out on here to kind of give you guys a visual of what we're going for as far as the overall height of the top of the chassis. So, um, the, the old frame rails used to end, they, they bent and went around right at the back of the uh, bolt and cradle, which kind of did a shape like this, but then you got both double tubes in there. So, um, with this new top rail coming back, I'm actually going to bring it back to where it's um, basically right at the back edge of the tail panel of the body. Um, did that for uh, somewhat of a bumper in the rear, obviously, to, if, God forbid, everything, anything ever happened, got ruined with the car, that sort of thing, it wouldn't crunch the body too far before it actually hit a frame rail too. So, decided to bring that all the way back. Um, and then, so when we do the, the lower tube, it's gonna end up being uh, kind of lower. It'll be about down in this range here. Obviously way tucked in inside everything, but it's gonna be a lot lower. Uh, not a whole lot higher than what the bottom of the frame rail tube uh, is, you know, in the middle of the chassis. So um, there's a visual for you guys on that to show you a little bit more of what I was going for and why. Uh, so now uh, we'll show you kind of some images of the inside of where the body is here and then I'll explain to you guys um, what I've figured out as far as the layout of the two for the new bumper rail here. All right, so once I got all the measurements uh, of kind of where I wanted the frame rail as far as the height from the chassis table or that represents the ground, so once I knew where I wanted this part of the rail from the ground and uh, you know where the existing rail was here from the ground, uh, basically all I needed at that point was to you know figure out um, kind of where I wanted the straight sections to end uh, as far as the relation to front to back 
um, in this area. So I knew I wanted this to end. Uh, based on my measurements, I measured off the old frame rail, um, which is somewhere in this range here. I knew that from that point to basically where the uh, upper uh, link mount is for the suspension, it was about 18 inches. So um, I decided to leave myself some straight area before then and some straight area uh, after the end of the tube here, but before the bend here. So 18 inches from there to there. And so I took that. So knowing that information and then also knowing the width of the existing frame rail on the front from side to side. So from this side to the other side, the center line of the tubes was 41 inches. So um, I decided from there to, once I measured my suspension points in the front, knowing about how much room I wanted to give myself, I decided on a 25 inch uh, frame rail width in this section here from side to side. So that's the center line width. So the frame rail from the one side to the other, 25 inches on the center line. So it has to go from 41 inches wide here to 25 inches wide side to side uh, here. So obviously not only is this bend here going to have to kick the frame rail up and then back down flat, but it's also going to have to go kick it in towards the middle of the car and then back out to come, you know, flat back through this section. So um, with that information, I took those measurements and I put the information in the Bentec software, um, which obviously you can, uh, once you design up your part, you know, all your parameters, you can draw it up in the Bentec software and it will give you um, the points of which you need to bend, all that sort of thing. Um, there are tutorials uh, on the Bentec software. If you're curious on how it works, you're interested in checking it out. Uh, we do have those, uh, you know, videos and such uh, on our website and that sort of thing. So uh, we do sell the Bentec software. If you have any questions on it, you can give us a call on that. But uh, aside from going into a full Bentec tutorial, um, I'm just going to basically show you guys how I use the information here on the car to be able to put it here and then get that information back and kind of know about where I'm going to be. So um, basically from the end of the frame here where I cut it off to the back, the very back of the car where I want that frame rail to cross the back of the car and then come back forward obviously to meet uh, the other side. Um, that distance there um, was about 37 and a half. So using that information from front to back, um, did a couple of different printouts here, but um, basically I'll show you guys some images of these up close, but uh, basically from the front to the back, I got that measurement that I, I knew that where I wanted that, I knew where I wanted my bend points. So I put that all in bend tech. Like I said, it spit out the information I needed. Um, sometimes depending on how you like to do it, I've always, I guess, uh, when I learned how to do roll cage stuff, um, it was all based on the center line. So the center line of the car, um, you know, so if you're doing a roll bar, say a main hoop for a roll bar, uh, instead of trying to start, say at the bottom corner here, figure out your bends all the way around till you get to the other side. I always like to start, um, by knowing my width at the top. So, um, if, you know, say it was 40 inches wide at the top. That's how I, that's how wide I knew I needed my bar when I bent both sides. Basically I would start at the center. So I knew I had to go a certain amount of distance out from the center of this side, a certain amount out on that side. And that would get both of my bends going down towards the floor. And then I could tweak from there what I needed to do down low. So I still like to take the same approach when I'm doing chassis work, um, base everything off the center line of the chassis. Um, because, especially when you're building a custom project like this, if, you've, if you build everything according to the center line, um, it just, not only you get used to that aspect and you know that, okay, based on center line, it was this measurement, this measurement, and that doesn't matter if you're mounting suspension, if you're mounting other components of the car, if you're doing side to side components that are gonna have the same features, uh, if you base everything off of center line measurements of the car, it really helps in your head know where things are at and verifying that the sides are matching side to side. So 
with that, instead of just starting here at the front and trying to bend up, bend down, bend across, bend back forward and come back around, I'm actually going to be starting my measurements based on the center of the rear tube that's going to be at the tail pan here because I know that I'll have to measure out a certain distance and then bend forward and then, and then from there I can bend the down and then forward on both sides. So um, that's just the way I like to do things. Some people might have different schools of thought and that's just fine, um, but that's the way I like to do it. All right, so I'm gonna to explain to you guys uh, how I like to uh, bend something when I'm trying to do something that is a mirror image. So if you think about the back of this tube, I'm gonna try uh, like I said before, to get this all done out of one tube. And um, so this is going to be a fairly complex part based on, uh, I bent up a piece of TIG wire here to kind of replicate some of the shapes that I need to bend uh, in the frame rail tube. So if you think about it, if this was in the car this way, um, you know, it would need to come off of the frame rail down here and then it's going to bend up and in towards the middle of the car and up and then it's going to come back here go around the back of the tail pan and then come back around that other way so i don't typically like to bend a tube starting at one end and going to the other um, i find it's easier when you're doing something mirror image to basically start at the middle so if this was straight start at the middle of the tube. So um, get your center line measured here, measure everything off the center. And that way you can mark the bends the same on both sides. So being that this is a mirror image, if this first bend was 10 inches out from the center line, measure 10 inches, 10 inches. And then if this one was uh, 18 inches, measure 18 inches, 18 inches, and then uh, say if this was 25, uh, then it's 25 and 25. And so you get all those marked out on your straight tube based on the center line, and then you can come around. And there's either two ways you can do it. You can bend both of the first bends on both sides first. So you could bend this bend and then this bend, and then you could bend this bend and this bend, and then this bend and this bend. Uh, just because you know when you're setting up say a programmable tubing bender um, where you can punch in what angle you're going to bend if this is a 90 this is a 90 then you're bending those two 90 degrees you can bend the one move your part bend the other 90 before you change the program setting on the bender because this is a one-off part and not a uh, production part i'm not going to be saving a program in there or whatever so i'm just going into the manual mode punching in what degree I need and then running it from there. So um, bend that 90, 90, and then uh, according to the bend tech, this uh, second angle here is, uh, let's see, it's 42, basically 42 degrees. Um, bend tech calls it 42.005, but um, I'm gonna go ahead and say basically 42 degrees. Um, so. Like I said, 90, 90, 42, and then 42, and then this is also 42 because this is gonna be flat here, and then it's bending out and down, and then back uh, kind of up and in to make it come back straight with the frame rail here. So um, 90, 90, and then change the program setting to 42, bend this 42, uh, bend this 42, and then, you know, or I can bend this 42 and then this 42 and then this 42 and that 42. So there's a couple different ways you can do it. Uh, it really doesn't matter as long as you achieve the goal uh, and the result that you want on your bends. So basically at this point, I'm going to cut my tube to length, which is 113 inches uh, roughly. And then I'm gonna mark my center line, figure out according to the bend tech papers, uh, where my bend locations need to be, get those marked out, and then we can get over on the uh, Bailey RDB 250 and start bending up the tube and show you guys how that works. All right, guys, so uh, we've got the um, stick of tubing cut out here, 113 inches and 1 16th um, for the upper section of the frame rail that we're making. So 
Um, got this cut out, put it on the table here, and I've already gone ahead and marked the center line of the tube. So we were at 113 uh, and a 16 in inches. So um, what I've done, um, I just left off the 16th, uh, basically. Uh, we're gonna have enough at the end that we're gonna have to cut off anyway to, to make our length. So um, split 113 in half. So 113 divided by two is uh, 56.5 inches. So um, that gives us our 113 total length, 56 and a half in the middle. So basically, uh, according to our Bentec, uh layout here that we have, the way I did this, like I said earlier, was uh, designed at the whole tube as one piece. And then um, I did a, a different layout as far as the bend order of how we wanted to bend this up. And the reason I did that is because I found when you're making mirror sides, it's easier to start from the middle and bend your way out. Uh, and then you're bending the same direction uh, in the bender uh, to where the bends all turn out the same and the part uh, will be closer to mirror image than if you were to start at one end and go the other. Because whenever you bend a tube, you know, if you bend two 90s and then uh, let's say you bend a 90 degree tube and it bends this way and then you bend another one and you start from the other side and go that way. If you lay them next to each other, they are really, obviously, it's, if it's a 90 degree, they're gonna be 90 degrees, but the, the shape of the tubing and all that kind of stuff is gonna be slightly different. Uh, whether it was at the start of the bend or towards the end of the bend, that sort of thing, there's gonna be a little bit different profiles uh, in the tube itself when it's bent. So that's why I like to start from the middle and bend out working towards the end of the tube because then as you're doing the part in the bender, you're starting to bend at the same point and bending the same direction towards the end of the tube to where if, like I said, on that mirror image part, when you get it in there, the bends are gonna be as close to mirror image as possible. So that's the way I like to do it. So with that, like I said, our, our Bentec layout, the way we laid this out, um, our first bend location from the center of the tube is at seven inches. So what I'm gonna do here is get my ruler out. I'm gonna obviously line this up with my center line. We're gonna mark over seven inches. And I like to put a pretty fat line on here. And I always mark with my Sharpie so that the, uh, the edge of the line is the line that you cut. And I always put a little, uh, little reference mark on there, an arrow or something to uh, just remind myself of which side of that line uh, I need to bend from. So I'm going to go ahead and mark that seven inches out on both sides. So got that there, reference marks. Now, obviously, uh, when we bend this, because as we're bending the bends, the first two are straight 90s and they have to remain flat. So when they're when I'm done, I should be able to lay it on the table and the tube will lay flat on the table. After that, uh, we start rotating the tube in the bender to where you know the bend, as it bends, will kick down uh, on both sides and then kick up and back forward. So uh, we have to clock the tube in the bender. So what I'm gonna do um, is I'll show you a trick that I use. Um, I did a Trick Tip Tuesday video on this. So if you look at it, uh, um, I, you know, I think we called it like easy bend marking or something like that. But anyway, um, you can either slide, say, a bigger piece of tubing that slides right over the tube that you can mark all the way around the tube. Uh, sometimes I'll actually use a piece of paper. Um, I'll use poster board. So I'll use the stock cut edge, uh, you know, and obviously wrap it around the tube all the way around and get the paper lined up and then mark around the whole entire tube. That way, that's another way to do it, um, to be able to know exactly where your bend location is all the way around the tube. So that way when you clock it, rotate it, all that sort of thing. I'm not gonna worry about that on these um, because I'm bending the same direction. Um, actually, I'll have to spin this one over and mark it. So anyway, I may do it on all of them. But, so we got those first two marked. Um, so at this point, uh, the next bend in line is at 30.497. 
I'm not going to notice those uh, uh, three thousandths, so I'm just going to mark it at 30 and a half. Um, so lay this on here. This is a 36 inch straight edge, so go ahead and lay that on there. 30 and a half. Got that marked with a nice line. Going to rotate this clamp just, loosen it up a hair, rotate this over. Actually, let's go ahead and just slide this down. Okay. Set this straight edge out here. Mark down. Thirty and a half. Oop, wrong side of my line. There's my reference. Um, so the next bend, according to this, is going to be at 45.987. So we're almost at 46 inches, so 13 thousandths under um, 6 inches, so, um, you know, 46 inches. So um, I'm going to go ahead. Just, I always like to burn an inch, and so when you burn an inch, that means that you're starting on the one inch line because you know if you're using a tape measure, you got the hook on the end, and uh, so I burn that inch. So you got to remember that. So now that I'm marking this and I'm burning an inch, I got to mark it at basically 47 inches instead of 46 inches. So um, you know I could try to get real precise and mark thousands, but you know three thousands, thirteen thousands, all that sort of thing. I don't really see that that's going to be noticed at all. Um, let's see. Get this tape measure laid over. Got lucky on my clamp placement because 47 is right before it. So. At 47, which is actually 46, because I burned an inch, like I said. And go ahead and slide this back and do the same on the other side. So, burn an inch, lay this out to 47. We're burning an inch, so it's actually 46. Got that marked and referenced. So now I've got all those lines marked out on our tube. It's six bends, six bends total. Um, so I got those marked out. I'm going to grab some paper. We'll cut a strip, wrap it around, get it taped to where we have that complete circle. I'll trace those around, and uh, then we'll be ready to start bending. So. All right, guys, so uh, like I said, we're going to be using the Bailey RDB 250 bender. Um, this is a programmable, uh, programmable bender. So um, we've got the machine on. I'm running the machine in manual mode. So manual mode meaning that um, each bend is its own standalone bend. It doesn't just automatically go to the next bend. It's not a programmed part where we've got multiple bends programmed in, any of that sort of thing. So manual mode. Um, with this machine, you can adjust the uh, bending speed, that sort of thing, uh, to maybe have more or less spring back, um, depending on 
um, maybe the size of the material you're bending, thickness of the material, that sort of thing. I'm just running it at speed one, which is the lowest setting, just because that's what I like to do. So uh, this is inch and a half, 120 wall tubing, like I said earlier. And um, so we have a inch and a half tube die on a 5.5 inch radius. So uh, it's basically 11 inches if you were to bend to 180. So I've got the tube in here uh, lined up. There's a um, marker line on the die itself that shows you where zero is. So I've got our uh, bend location lined up with that. And as you see right here, I've got this uh, rotation gauge on here. Uh, now this is a combo set that we sell because um, you can take this off and you know use it different ways uh, to find angles. Um, and then this is a clamp on part. So uh, there's a nice magnet on here, stick it on there. This is a really nice uh, kind of dial indicator here. Um, I already have it set uh, right at zero. So the reason I have this on here Obviously the tube is straight at the moment. So the reason I have this on here is so once I get through this first bend and it swings around, we're gonna flip the tube over uh, 180 degrees end to end and we're gonna bend the bend that's right here. So then we'll have basically, uh, we'll have a straight, a 90, a, a short straight section here and then another 90. So um, like I said, bend this one first, flip it over. And so we'll flip it over make sure that this is back at zero, uh, but it's gonna be hanging upside down. So uh, we'll make sure it's back at zero, and then that will tell us that our rotation's the same, that we didn't move the tube, any of that sort of thing. Uh, so that way we can make sure that the uh, part is nice and flat when we're done with these first two bends. Later on, after the first two bends, uh, we'll be um, going to the next bend in line, which there's one right here. So we'll, have to, we'll move this after the first two bends, and there's another one here on both ends of the tube. So at that point, we will be able to show you the way to, uh, starting with the part flat, how to rotate the part in a way to kick your bend angle at a different angle, um, you know, and be able to mark, uh, judge that using the rotation gauge here. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and bend. I've got the bender set at 90 degrees. Uh, we calculated about five and a half degrees of spring back in the material uh, based on a test bend. So going to bend about 95 and a half degrees um, so tighten the clamp up uh, always make sure when you're doing a duplicate part like this where you're trying to get the same bends uh, this is you know has the 290s in it uh, or 245s and that sort of thing always make sure that you tighten up this part uh, the same pressure both times so this has a little uh, little dial on it that counts up uh, here so you can get to that specific number and be able to loosen it, go back to that specific number on how much you tightened it. So we're going to go ahead and bend this 90. So uh, we'll go ahead and go forward. Now, like I said, we went that 95 and a half. Keeping a little bit of back pressure on this to keep it in the die. So there's our first 90 degree bend. So now I'm gonna flip this over. And because I marked these lines all the way around, we'll line it right back up and bend the next one. Now I've got this in here just clamped tightly in place. We'll be able to move it. Um, I'm gonna put a little more pressure on here, see where we're at on our dial, which we are about one degree. So I'm gonna go ahead and give this a little pull down. Check our dial. You know, I'm gonna go 
just a hair more. I always like to kind of, on these dials, uh, give it a little touch just to uh, make sure that we're lined up, which that right there looks like zero to me. So the last thing I'm going to do is finish tightening this up, get back to our same number, verify one more time that we're at zero, which I think we might have moved a hair, which is normal. Give a little bit of up on that. Check it again. And I say we're pretty good. So now we're gonna bend this second bend, which the machine's still set at 90 degrees, five and a half degrees to spring back, speed one. Now the first thing I'm going to do to keep from damaging anything is remove this dial indicator so we can keep it safe. And at this point, this is the first two bends of our part. So you can see there we got our 90 and our 90 and we're pretty true. I'm going to Verify that these are 90, verify that the part is flat this way, and if we need to make any tweaks, we will. All right, so we've got these bins checked. Everything lays out the way we need it to, so we're moving on to bins three and four. So um, essentially what I'm gonna do is bend both bins on this leg, and then I'm gonna bend, flip a machine, bend both legs on this, and I'll explain why. Um, first, what I'm gonna do, uh, in order to reposition my rotation gauge, um, we're gonna check the level of the tube right here against the level of the die in that same direction. So according to this, we're at 0.35 uh, and it's up towards this side. So we're gonna put this on the flat area here. And we're gonna move the tube until we read that same 0.35, which it does right there, 0.35 with it up this way. I'm gonna go ahead and snug it right to that same position. So that way we're ready to bend. So we're there. Now the tube dropped a little bit down when I did that. So I'm gonna give it a little bit of tweak in here just to make sure that we're there. And there we are at the 0.35 with it up a little bit this way. So this way we are completely level this way with the die this way. <clears throat> so now I can set my rotation gauge on here. So I'm gonna get this and I'm gonna explain what I'm gonna do here. I'm actually gonna put this on upside down and I'll explain why. So Get this on here, find that zero mark. Because we leveled the tube out, we can now find our zero, which is right there. All right, so the rotation gauge is tight. It's zeroed out, uh, so we don't need this anymore. Um, so what I need to do is that essentially I'm, I put this back in here as if we had just bent this first bend. Now, basically as if I bent this and then just slid the tube straight out, this would be the position that it would have been in to move to our next bend. So according to our bend tech, how we had it laid out in the program here, um, we need to rotate this tube in order to get the right bend, we're going to rotate this tube 221.186 degrees. So uh, 
you know, we'll get close on the 0.186, obviously, with the dial. You know, if we were using a digital angle finder, we could get even closer probably, but I'm okay with using this because we're going to be super close. So, you know, s part of tube bending, um, you know, sometimes, you know, the, you know, in, in a program like Bentech, it's a perfect world. So when you put in dimensions, it gives you uh, a spec that's, you know, perfect. And some part of tube bending on a project um, is understanding that it's not a perfect world. And, you know, sometimes, you know, especially, uh, you know, when you're something talking a rotation, getting something to the 0.186 degree uh, is, you know, that's probably something you're not really going to see in the project. So as long as you get it as absolutely close as you can, uh, you can work with it. So with that, what I'm going to do now that I zeroed this out, I had already clamped that to, to say that this was, would be okay if I'm bending it. But before I bend that, I need to rotate this to 221 degrees. So I'm going to back this off to just loosen up the tube just a little bit without going too crazy. I don't want it to drop on me. Um, because all I'm going to be measuring the rotation off of this. So we were set at zero. So back this off just a hair more. And we're going to go over. Now we're, you know, we meet, we meet that zero mark again. So we want 180. Now we're going to go down. We're going to go down 40 because it's 180. So 221 minus 180 is 41 degrees. So uh, at this point, we're hitting the handle on the bender, but uh, you know we still have a little bit of ways to go and we're gonna be under that handle. So um, what I'm gonna do is actually slide this, I'm gonna loosen up this clamp a little further. We're gonna slide this out. We're gonna drop under that handle, go back in and find our zero mark again on the tube to the die itself. We're gonna run this back in. Now, I'll look on our rotation gauge to see where exactly we are, and we're only at 32 degrees. So, I already went to 180, so we're gonna slide this down even further. Now we're at 40, 41, and so we're gonna, starting right there, like I said, at about that 41 to so mark, we're gonna make sure we're still at zero, and we are. Check this out again. Uh, it kinda went back to 40, so I'm gonna put a hair bit of down pressure on there. Now, we're really close to the 41, but I want to get this fully tight first, so we're ready to bend. And that's where I am. And almost 41, so I'm going to go ahead and give that a little bump. Almost. We are right at that 41 line on this side. The cool part about this rotation gauge also is that you can see it from both sides. So I can see on this other side that I am looking right at 41. Uh, so, you know, for me in a two bending world, that's close enough. Um, we were looking for uh, 41, uh, 0.187. I'm at 41 at 0.187 degree of rotation uh, this way. You know, uh, when you're talking this distance, 187, 0.187 of a degree is so minor. Now, if this was 20 feet out, then you might notice some difference. But in this short a distance, I'm not really going to notice that. So, um, you know, we're tight. We're at we're, our bend line here. Uh, we're going to be bending 42 degrees, which uh, doing a calculating bend, uh, we figured it out about four and a half degrees of spring back on 42 degrees. So um, we're going to be bending 46.7 degrees. So uh, essentially, you know, this obviously is going to rotate this way. And, you know, when you're doing a complex part like this, 
obviously trying to make sure that you're clearing the vending machine, uh, you know, and things around you uh, in the shop, you know, when you got a big tube swing and it's always important. Always make sure that you're gonna clear everything before you start bending. You don't wanna be in the middle of a bend and then, you know, have to stop, you know, cause spring back's different based on if you bent a little and then have to go a little more, things like that. So get everything calculated out, make sure you got the room and uh, get to bending. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, bend this and uh, then we'll move on. We'll slide the tube down and move on to this bend, which from there we're, we need to, because this bend is, you know, this way 42 degrees and this bend is 42 degrees the opposite direction. And it's actually 180 degrees different um, to get us back to being straight. So um, keeping this on here, we'll slide it down, rotate it 180 degrees, get it lined up where we need it to be. And then we'll bend the other one and we'll move to the other side. All right, there's our nice 42 degree bend there. Now, this is what I was saying. See, you can see the profile. Now that bend is going out and down away from the center line of this, uh, what is gonna be the center line of the frame. So we're gonna put this back in. And because our rotation gauge is still attached, we didn't mess any of that up. Um, let's see, we're gonna be Let's see here. Get the follower die back to where it's kind of clamping it, holding it. Um, you know, so we were down uh, at 40 degrees and now we are, let's see, 180, eh. too far so now I just need to make sure now we were at f uh, 40 with it the other way now we rotated this around now I need to make sure that I'm 40 degrees the opposite direction so basically we're sitting right about 42 and it's because I'm a little low rotate that up just a little bit and now we are right back at that 41 facing the other direction now the way to check this because I went 180 is that this tube should be level this way you know with the die so I'm gonna use this here just to double check Now we were 035 up this way, and now according to this, we are right at 0.35 up that same direction. So we're good. The last thing I'm gonna do, obviously we're gonna probably have to do a little tweaking, make sure that this is fully tight, which typically it rotates the tube a little bit when you tighten it up. So got that fully tight again. Let's double check. Still at 41 here. It's, we're at 0 0.30 now uh, up this way. So it dropped just a skosh, but you're talking 0 0.05 degrees, uh, you know, this way, uh, you know, yeah, we can tweak it just a little bit. Now we're at the 0.35, so we'll leave that there. And same exact bend, opposite way.
All right. Now, you can see how that bottom bend has now kicked us back straight with this bend here. So we're here, down, and then kicking back straight. Now we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. And this will be the top tube to the frame of the rear of the car. All right guys, so you can see this is just dr dropped directly in place here um, in the back of the car. No cutting, uh, anything like that yet. Um, obviously, as you can see in the back there, it's sitting on top of the flange at the rear of the trunk there. Um, and it's sitting on top of the tubes that it has to connect in here. So the whole thing's too high. The back setting up, a, a, I don't know, probably three or four inches too high. Um, but I just wanted to set it in here so you could see after that bending process uh, how close it is to fitting. So I'm actually gonna uh, we'll lay out right now. We'll figure out exactly where we need to cut these, uh, you know, here at the front to be able to meet up with these tubes. And then, uh, you know, we'll get it set up in place. So we're gonna be using uh, some inch and a quarter uh, DOM tubing uh, to slide inside of the tube. So anytime you, um, you're gonna be joining round tubing together, um, you know, or really any, uh, you know, frame stuff. If you're going to be doing a butt weld fit up on something like this, uh, it's a good idea to have some uh, support on the inside. So we're going to bevel the ends of the pipe where we fit those together. And then from there, uh, you know, like I said, we'll slide that tube in. We'll have holes drilled in this tubing here, as well as the frame. And we'll plug weld those. We'll butt weld the seam between the two pieces of tubing. And uh, you know, then we'll metal finish that all out uh, once this is all for sure in place and done. So um, at this point, we can start getting it fit in the car, get it completely set and mocked up in place, and uh, we'll start working on the bottom tube. All right, so uh, got the front of the tubes cut uh, and got the new section here set in place. It's connected to the tubes on the existing frame rails. So. Uh, basically, at this point, um, you know, other, aside from uh, setting up some risers to hold the frame rail uh, at the guaranteed height that it's supposed to be, because um, right now there's nothing holding it, it's just kind of in place here. Um, I set this rear body cross member uh, that I had made up in place and uh, got the got a couple of stacks of washers here to kind of hold everything uh, at what I would think would be a pretty um, acceptable height for everything so really just to mock up make sure everything fits so i already have body mount locations so you can kind of see where these clecos hang down here there's body mount locations in the body cross member and so now i'll have to make a you know a plate to hold the bushing and the whole deal to uh be able to attach the body mounts there um so yeah at this point um I'm going to set up some risers to hold the tube in place and then we'll be able to start laying out the bottom tube of the chassis. So um, once the bottom tube is in place then we'll work on connecting and making all the bracketry for the points of the frame uh, to go to the suspension mounts, uh, you know, that sort of thing and also hold the rear diff uh, in place. So um, that's going to complete this video though. So. Um, we'll make another video on the bottom tube and uh, as we keep working, so we'll kind of do a little mini series on this. So that's going to complete this video uh, of, you know, bending up this chassis tube. So uh, hopefully you picked up on some stuff uh, that you can use uh, for yourself. Thanks for watching this video. Subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos on high performance tools for the fabricator.